Um, well, obviously, we dug ourselves a hole in the first half that was, uh, you know, really hard to climb out of. Although we did go back up one late in the game, I was proud of the group that we played in the second half. I thought that there was so much fight and grit and toughness on the floor uh, in the second half than it was in the first. Um, you know, it was good to get over the hump initially, but we got to be able to be smarter and make better plays down the stretch than we did. I thought that we took some rough shots uh, down the stretch that didn't necessarily fall in line with what we wanted to get as a group. Uh, wasn't the best shot for us. Uh, we had some guys in the locker room take full responsibility for that. I take responsibility for a couple sets down the stretch that we didn't quite execute because you Notre know, Dame showed us a different coverage. I got to be better down the stretch. Uh, but larger part, I'm just so, so happy for our team because we competed and we got after it and we got back in the game. Um, and so many times before we, 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 we cracked and we, you know, didn't bounce back at all and we bounced back. And that's got to be the standard. Uh, we're out of five guys, five guys to understand that that is the standard. Um, we shortened the rotation in the second half for a reason. And, uh, you know, I, I'm going to continue to do that going forward. I, I'm only going to play the guys that are going to get after it. And uh, the problem with our group this year is, you don't know who those guys are from one day to the next. And, uh, you know, it's our job, my job as the head coach to try to figure that out and, uh, you know, weed those guys out that aren't going to get after it and compete and, and keep the guys on the floor that are. Go to Brett. Hey Mike, you guys seemed so much more aggressive getting the ball to the paint in the second half. How, how did you think that changed the way you looked? And, and was that an emphasis at halftime to, to get it more in that direction? And, Focus a little less on threes. Well, we wanted, if you know, if you're watching the game, Brett, we, we literally threw the ball in the paint the first two possessions of the first half. We threw it to Sidney Curry, who didn't get much out of it. Actually, he got an assist the first play. He got a layup. And on the second possession, he got stuck under the basket. So our game plan was to get the ball in the paint. We wanted to go right at Paul Atkinson because Nate Lashevsky was out of the game. Unfortunately, uh, you know, Sid couldn't get going tonight offensively or defensively. We played Rose. Rose is our leading rebounder in limited minutes, but Rose isn't necessarily a guy that you want to go to in the paint, especially against Paul Atkinson when Roosevelt Will is just coming back from a concussion. He's really not a go-to post-up threat just yet at all, but he's working at it. So we want, we felt more comfortable putting the ball in Jalen Withers' hands, who had a good thing going. He had some really good plays in the first half. Dre Davis. He traveled once in the first half against Trey Wurst. So we were throwing the ball in the post in the first half. We were just able to make more plays and convert in the second half. But the plan was always to get the ball in the paint. Kent? Yeah, Mike, you kind of touched on it um, in your opening statement. But when you guys kind of took the lead at that point, it seemed like the threes kind of started getting, getting jacked up a little bit at times. What did you see from, from your kids in that stretch? Well, I saw us fight and I saw us claw. And I know some guys haven't made shots the way that they've been capable of making shots in, in, in the past. And it's unfortunate because all we can do as coaches is continue to encourage those guys and all they can do as players is continue to stay with it and get in the gym. And trust me when I tell you, our guys shoot the ball all the time and they shoot game shots. And, you know, you know, as a shooter, it, it comes in waves sometimes, right? I mean, guys, will miss 20, 30 in a row at times. Some of the best shooters, you know, and unfortunately we have a few guys that are stuck in the mud in that regard, but we just can't take bad ones. And we took a couple bad ones down the stretch. Um, you know, those guys know who they are and they admitted that. And they didn't do it out of selfishness. They do it, they did it because um, they were trying to make a play. And, you know, I, as much as I appreciate them being aggressive and, and you know, trying to make a play. At the end of the day, we have to make the best play for global basketball. And, and some of those shots certainly were not. And, and just a quick follow-up, if I may, Kenny. Mike, do you think some of it is they just want to win so bad? That well, some absolutely. You, swing, you swing for the fences a little bit. Yeah, yes, you know, that's, that's a good reference. You swing for the fences, you're trying to knock it out of the park, you're trying to put the dagger in and all of that. And can't do that, all right? You got to hit singles. You gotta hit singles, you gotta be smart, you gotta take good ones. Um, you know, I thought the Dre's transition three was a good shot because it was in rhythm. Um, you know, I know he's not a terrific three-point shooter, but when he gets his feet set, you know, he's capable of making one. He had played well. I didn't mind that one. We've already talked about the one he shot on in the left corner. 
uh, Mason's three and, and transition wasn't a good one. He knows it. He admitted it. Um, and so, you know, again, we took some rough ones. Uh, Noah had a rough one late as well. So, you know, um, we got to do better. We got to, we got to, we, we have to understand what the best, what the best shot is for moving basketball on down the stretch and not try too hard. Matt. Hey, Mike. Uh, obviously, uh, JJ was able to get on the court uh, for the first time since before Christmas. W well, what did you think out of his on-court time that he had tonight? And do you, and you mentioned kind of wanting to shorten up the rotation moving forward. Do you anticipate maybe JJ playing a bigger role in these last handful of games? I, I tell you what, JJ had two of his best practices uh, all year in the last couple of practices, and um, I'm going to play him provided that he plays like that and he's tough and he's gritty and he plays hard and, and he mixes it up, which he did the last couple of days of practice and which he obviously did today. Um, that we need more of that. We just, we just need guys to come in off the bench that are going to play hard and, and do things the right way. And JJ throughout the year, despite not playing, he's done things the right way. He hasn't come in and moped or pouted. Uh, this is my fourth game. Okay, I want to make something very clear about JJ because I know it's a lot of questions out there about him. And to start the season for the first six games, okay, to start the season for the first six games, JJ was coming back from a hamstring injury, and JJ was not at his best. All right, he was not at his best to start the season, and some guys passed him early on. And so I didn't feel comfortable starting JJ or play, or certainly playing, even playing JJ in the first six games. And then Coach Mack comes back, and now he's the head coach. All right, up until the four games ago, where I'm the head coach. And during that time, when Coach Mack was the head coach. We thought JJ was, you know, not necessarily outplaying a Matt Cross, who had some big plays for us throughout the season. Not necessarily playing, outplaying a Jalen Withers or Malik Williams, who had a good stretch, or Sidney Carey or Roosevelt Wheeler. We didn't necessarily think we was outplaying those guys during that stretch. So then I come back, and now I'm the head coach for four games. And against Duke and Carolina, I thought that we had a good thing going, all right? And JJ hadn't quite done anything in practice to lead me to believe that he should play. And then we go to Syracuse, okay? In the pride of Syracuse, JJ we, we was in the midst of thinking about trying to get a red shirt. All right. And that's his right. And we didn't in order in an effort to make sure that he could potentially get that red shirt year back. He asked me, you know, coach, I don't know if I should play. He didn't want to play. So I didn't, that's why I didn't put him in, in the Syracuse game. OK, of course, I would put that kid in, in, in that situation, especially if, you know, um, he's a good kid. I put Brad in a walk on. And so fast forward to the day. JJ, I text JJ. I said, JJ, have you made a decision? What do you want to do? And he said, Coach, I think my chances of getting away are slim to none. I want to play. And incidentally, he had two really good practices, literally his two best practices of the year. We've got some things going on with some other guys at that position now. So it opened up a situation for him to play. And I'm proud of him because the kid has been through a lot. He's battled. He's fought um, through not playing, which is hard. I want to see him continue to battle and fight and practice and out-compete guys the way that he did against Notre Dame tonight. And if he does that, he's going to continue to play. I hope that clarifies things. All right, we'll go to Brad and then Michael. Uh, Mike, quickly, uh, Sam didn't play. Was there a health reason or anything like that or just a coach's decision not to play coach's him? Coach's decision. And, and then Jalen has looked like a different guy the last few games. He said that you've given him some – some juice was the word he used. Said you've instilled some confidence in him. What do you think has happened over these last few games to to change his approach? I want him around the basketball. I want him playing around the basket. I want him posting. I want him using his athleticism and his size. He's unique. He can he can post big guys, smaller guys. He can make a three when he's wide open. He had a big one tonight. But I want. The, the, the focus of his game to be about playing in the lane and not floating around on the perimeter. And that's my charge to him. And I need him to meet me in the middle on that and continue to compete around the basket and be tough in that lane. And we're going to be all right if he does that. If he's not, me and him going to have problems. I'm happy for him because he played hard tonight and he played well. But it, it's, it's, it, it centers around him getting in the lane and playing around the basket. He's got to play inside out. And if he does that, he's going to continue to have success. 
Michael. Hey, Mike. Um, you've had you've got this message where you want the guys that are going to show that effort, even if it's just five of them. You've got now a week off until the next game. What do you want to see out of the guys? What kind of response do you want to see from your guys from the next few days? Well, again, I'm going to give them a couple of days off because I think it's important that we all kind of get away from it a little bit. It's been a rough road. Uh, we have, we've had a four game stretch since I've been head coach and a lot has happened. And I think we need a breather. Um, this this break couldn't have come at a better time. And uh, so I'm going to get the guys Thursday and Friday off. We'll get a skill workout on Saturday uh, where guys will you know, come in and work hard and get a really good sweat and improve their individual uh, skill sets, ball handling, you know, shooting, passing, the whole nine. And then we'll have a three-day prep for Miami. And we're going to be so competitive Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. We are going to get after each other. And I'm going to find out who I can who I can rock. And see, here's the thing. If I get 13 guys really competing at a high level, then that makes it hard on me to, to decide who I'm going to play. But again, it, it, it has to be every day. It has to be not only on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, but then it has to manifest itself on Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. So I need some everyday guys that are going to come in and be the right way, but we're, we're going to find out. Uh, you know, we're going to separate, you know, the meek from the, you know, from the from the guys that are going to really be tough. And we're going to do that over the course of uh, our preparation for Miami starting on Sunday. Last question from Brett. Yep, Mike, obviously a, a rough start. It looked like on both ends for Malik when he did get in and then you didn't play him in the second half. What did you think of, of how he came back? Um, well, you know, it's not easy. I'm not going to sit here and vilify Malik Williams. Uh, he's been through a lot, you know, obviously with the suspension. And uh, he's got to get his rhythm back. He's got to get in the groove. But, you know, every guy in that locker room has to understand it has to be mind, body, and spirit. You got to be invested fully. And uh, I know that that was hard for him to be that way today. And hopefully that can change over the course of the next couple of days. Great. Thank you, Coach. Thanks to everybody for joining us.